So this is the very special cooking edition of uh, <laughs> Jenna and Heather that Heather alluded to some time ago. Um, all, the, all the things, we cover it all. <laughs> all the things. I'm so excited because I came hungry. Yes. Well, today it's not, what we're doing is super simple side dishes, but it's all about cashews. So I hope you like cashews. I love cashews. <laughs> gonna... I love cashews when they're used, I actually don't like to eat them okay. by themselves, but when they're used to make, you know, a tahini or God knows what else, I love them. Good. Yeah. Good. Okay. So all of these dishes are obviously vegan, gluten-free, um, and they're kind of like, um, side dishes that you would use with for other things like fruits or vegetables or crackers um, But I think we'll start with the easiest one. They're all very easy, but this one is like I mean, it's just it's kind of like a no-brainer if you have cashews on hand, so What you do need is a food processor My go-to's are usually a food processor and then also I have a Vitamix which is a high-powered blender so if you don't have a Vitamix, then, I mean, I feel like blenders nowadays, they, they can get up to good speed. So just make sure that it has some good oomph to it. Um, the first recipe we're going to be doing is a um, cashew butter. And guess how many ingredients are in it? Uh, two, <laughs> three, one. One? One. One. So all wow. I have are cashews. <laughs> wow. The magical ingredient. Um, and what I've done, so there's about, there's a little over, well, there's about a cup and a half here. Um, what I do is I spread these out on a cookie sheet and I put them in the oven for about eight to 10 minutes at 325 Fahrenheit. And you just kind of like roast them um, and then let them cool for maybe five minutes. And then I just throw them straight into the food processor like so like that <laughs> so easy <laughs> do you roast them, them on like a tin foil or on a cookie sheet or like what do you put them on to roast them um so i use a cookie sheet but my go-to is parchment paper um it's just great for anything going in the oven and i just feel like it's it's like a healthy option right um and does it matter like top shelf middle shelf uh lower shelf I'm always a middle shelf go-to depending on I mean I think for if I was just like broiling them maybe on the top but I feel like broiling you have to be so careful because as soon as you put something in on broil it can burn so fast so you almost have to like set a timer um, or else I mean they would they would they would probably darken too quickly so I put these on the middle rack on bake yeah okay like, so I feel like bake, you can kind of like set it and forget it. And even if you go over the 10 minutes, you're not going to, you're not going to burn them. I asked the, what may seem like obvious <laughs> questions to you, but for someone who never does no. this kind of thing, it's like sometimes people who are experienced in the kitchen forget about the rudimentary things that those who are not don't know. That's, that's a great question yeah. because intuitively you would think put it on the top shelf because you want to brown them, but yeah it's too much yeah it's okay. a little it's it's a little it puts a lot of pressure on you top mm -hmm. top shelf but if again if you use a timer then maybe but i feel like for this baking is fine okay so you just throw them in a food processor um sorry ah! that kicked on fast sorry it was supposed to be on pulse okay there we I'm go not even the sorry. startle type but that actually started sorry me. it was supposed to be on pulse okay so if you don't want to scare everybody in your house, make sure it's on pulse first. Or pull your your headphones. Um, and this is probably the longest process because you should pulse them or turn it on for a good like five minutes since you are trying to get like a creamy buttery texture. So I'm going to do that and I'm probably going to mute this out because nobody wants to listen to this. <laughs> You'll mute and we'll like go in like hyper we'll drive. Put, we'll put, pretend we have like <laughs> headphones on. Okay, here we go. So I'm just okay. going to... What? I can't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> We've got cashew butter, but Jenna can't hear. Um, so... It's the texture is a little bit well, we could have kept going, but as you can see, 
Like it's pretty much. Oh, that is. Like you a, could do like balls and stuff. Yes, yes, yes. Um, Yum. So as I said, we only used one ingredient. You can add um, sea salt if you like your mm. butters like a little bit. I do. On the I'm a salty salt side. person. The thing is cashews, what I love about them is they're naturally sweet. So that's why you don't have to add sugar. And then um, they have lots of like natural oils, which mm. nuts just do in general. Thank you. Look at it. So you can do crudite with cashew butter. I do that with um, peanut butter. I'll get like the crunchy peanut butter oh, jar nice. and just like go at it. Yeah. yeah, or hummus. I just get carrots. I have carrots and celery always prepped in my um, fridge. And then I always have hummus and I always have peanut butter. And then I'll just sit there and. Such a good healthy snack. Yeah. And hummus and nut butters are full of protein. So. And fat. And healthy fats. Mm. It's warm. It's warm. <laughs> so mm. normally you would put it in an airtight container and mm -hmm. um, you can keep it in your pantry for up to a month. And um, if it's in your fridge, you could keep it in there for two to three months. Mm. Yeah. So it's, and you know what? It's so much cheaper making it at home than buying it. Um, Cashew completely. butter is so expensive for some reason. I don't know. It's like. And you started with raw unsalted like organic yes. cashews. Yes. I have to say on the organic versus not organic, you know, of course the organic is more expensive, more expensive. And I am talking with my mouth full, but we're doing a cooking show. So get over it. Um, but like I had someone once say, you know, in terms of, um, what, what, what to spend your money on with the organic or not. Mm -hmm. It's like with things with the skin that you don't eat, you don't need to buy organic necessarily. Because you're taking it off, like avocados, bananas, but the stuff mm -hmm. where you're like putting it straight in your mouth, like the carrots, the celery, the apples, try to go organic. Mm -hmm. So there you go. So obviously we go through a lot of cashews here. Um, for us, the mm -hmm. cheapest um, option I have found for organic raw is at Costco. Sometimes you can find them online other brands and you can get huge bagfuls um but it's kind of hit or miss but we always know at costco we can get um their kirkland brand organic usda and what's the difference between like buying something like that and when you go to the bulk bins you know and you like scoop your own yeah i mean you can do that i find <laughs> Whenever I, if I was at Whole Foods or something and I found the organic raw cashews and I fill a giant bag, it's always a surprise and shock to me when <laughs> they weigh it. And then I feel like the price is always like double um, what this, this, this is usually about $17 and you get um, two and a half pounds. So I just feel like it's slightly more expensive, but I mean, prices... The bulk ones. Yeah, and bulk uh -huh. bulk prices obviously always fluctuate, so mm. you can keep checking back. But for some reason, these are... Yeah, they're kind of like avocados. Like, <laughs> you, you, have to, you have to have a separate budget for avocados and cashews. And what if you want to make your own peanut butter? Is it the same thing with peanuts? Um, or do you have to do a different process with peanuts? Peanuts... I mean, you can you can do the same because they're full of um, natural oils as well. I don't have a peanut allergy, so. Yeah, you could do the same. Um, I feel like because so many commercial nut butters, as well, especially peanut butters, are full of sugar, it might be a little bit like, oh, this is very... Ah, uh, like... Less interesting? Yeah. Cashews. Can you add, like, honey or anything? Or yeah. would that mess up the texture and get weird? No, you could. You could. You can always add a little bit of liquid. It's fine. Mm -hmm. I mean, when it's when it's homemade, the, you know, as, as you find if you buy something more natural in the store, the separation is mm -hmm. greater. So you'll get, you know, the oils at the top. And if you add other liquids, it'll separate more easily. So, yeah. So that's... That's fun. Now I just need to get a food processor. <laughs> You don't have one? Uh -uh. Do you like it? Uh huh. Yeah, it's good. The okay. celery is very a problem. Else? Do you want a piece of toast or something? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, you know. Cut I'll up, eat anything. Cut up some apple. Except salmon. 
Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd dip, That's oh bad. my God, an apple in there would be, apple with this would be fantastic. That is, yes. I know apple and nut butter is mm. one, of, one of my go-tos. Mm. Yum, yum, yum. Thank you. Next up. Yes, there's the more. Cash, wait, there's more. In the cashew party. Yeah. So I was washing out the food processor and um, I told Jenna we were going to be making a cashew cheese recipe and she's like, Woo! And she got all excited and I was like, shoot, that was so cute. It should have been on camera. And then she was like, but this is what I do. I can just redo it. And I was like, oh, right. You're an actress who is told multiple times a day. Do it again. Do it again. Do it again. Do it again. So it was super cute. But then I was asking her, I was like, do you ever get frustrated when you feel like, you know, you just did a good take and then it would be the director, right? Mm -hmm. And then the director's like, okay, let's do it again. And your answer was great. Which um, was? Well, because uh, oftentimes I may think it was great or it felt really good, but then maybe I don't have the objective point of view on myself. So, you know, maybe it's one of those things where, oh, you actually should have played it with less emotion. It would have been more powerful. Let's go again. And now just everything you played, just put that, I'll internalize it. Or, hey, can you show this aspect of the story a little bit more when you're connecting with him on that one line, you know, just like lean into that moment more. So it doesn't matter what I think really on if I thought I did good or not, because often they go again or it'll be, here's how, you know, sometimes you'll do a great take and you're like, and then the focus guy's like, I need another one because you were blurred. Oh, you weren't shoot. totally sharp or something went wrong with a stunt or yes. a light went out or the actor, your fellow actor forgot their line and you were really in it and then or I've messed up and they were in it I mean it's a myriad of things so yes I'm doing it over and over and over is there was there ever a time where you think back where it was like like what would be the most takes that you would have ever on keeping the faith there is this one scene um on the couch in Edward Norton in his character's apartment where I think it's the first time he like kisses me. He like makes a move on me and I'm, and then I've come he's to like, like, again, let's do it again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe that's why we did so many takes. Huh. He's like, we, we need to get it just right. I think we did like 35 takes uh -huh. of that one. Uh -huh. I never even thought that it was like for the kissing part. Was he a producer? Yeah, it was his movie. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> he was directing in it, starring in it, producing it. Nuff said. Nuff said. I mean, Bodhi was on that movie too. How did he feel about the thirty, the thirty days? <laughs> Edward's I, like Edward's like more tongue next time. <laughs> yeah. Can you just be more emotional with your mouth? Um, no. Uh, I, more, Bodhi more and I both lips. being actors. It's it's fine. Yeah. I mean, Bodhi's scenes were pretty. Uh, Pretty rough. Oh, yeah, he was having fun, too. <laughs> I thought it was pretty hilarious. I love that movie. Okay. Yeah. So, um, next up, we are going to... Actually, the next three recipes, we're going to be using um, raw cashews, which I feel like everybody in their fridge has, like, the staples, like, milk, eggs, and butter, and I have um, soaked cashews... <laughs> Amazing. And what are we making first? So we're making um, just like a cashew raw cheese that you can use for everything. Mm -hmm. Again, like veggies, crackers. Cheese? Yeah, cheese. So it's That you make? <laughs> That's yes. What I, I mean, keep in mind, it's not like your standard, you know, cheddar cheese. So keep your expectations. It's raw, vegan cashew cheese. But you know what? Honestly, when you like pair it with veggies and stuff, like it's so good. And, and seasonings. Yeah, and seasonings. Is and it like, like tofu where it could swing across different flavor profiles? Yes, yes, and you can add different herbs and like spice, yeah, spices and whatever you want. That's what I kind of love about cashews is they're just so versatile. So versatile. I'm now thinking of like a cashew butter tofu scrambly thing yes. with with seasonings and sky's the limit okay so i soak my cashews because then you can just make a lot of things with them um i do mine overnight but you know what i keep them in these big mason jars i've been known to keep this for like my little brains that i keep in the fridge <laughs> um i've kept this in the fridge for like a week because then if i need to make something quick i just like 
quickly grab them out. Um, but if you're in like a pinch, I would say at least soak them for an hour if you can. Um, if you put them in warm water, that speeds up the process as well. So for what's this, the ratio of uh, cashews to water? How do you know how much of each? Um, well, some, you know what, I just, I put the cashews in and then I just make sure they're covered and then I'll add like, I'll add maybe an extra two cups just because they do absorb, they absorb uh -huh. it. Um, also a lot of the recipes that I use these for, they ask for the water from the cashews just because the recipes require water. But if you taste the water, I don't know if you want to try it. Um, it looks like it would taste disgusting. <laughs> it looks like it would, it looks like it would taste. That's why we use organic because then it's not like, Oh yeah. Toxic. All the chemicals. In yeah. There. But it's sweet, so it adds like a little oh. bit of sweetness, like it's slightly sweet. Um, it is actually. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. Not so it so looks when you blend it really up, like gray and ugly. And I feel like it just helps emulsify, like when you're blending. I don't know, maybe because it's got the some. I bet it has. It. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna use a food processor again. Prepare to take your your earbuds out. <laughs> Again, I love my Vitamix, but the thing about using a food processor is it just, you get more like a, like a dippy texture rather than like Vitamix. It's like zero to 60 and you have something that's liquefied instantly. And then you're like, shoot, you can't like reverse it. <laughs> this, you just have more control. Um, and then, yeah, you can kind of control the, um, the texture, hmm. what, what you like. So, um, this is one cup of cashews, which I, I'm bad. I'm just like, I'm an eyeball measure. <laughs> you can I tell a little bit of this, a pinch of that, I am. a ish of this. I am. Okay. I mean, I'll say the measurements, but I guess I should probably just measure. Well, no, I, I just kind of know. You can tell I'm not a baker because if you're baking, I mean, I do bake some, but if you're baking, you cannot eyeball measurements. Yeah, right. <laughs> Like, if you put a dash more of baking powder or baking soda, like, you can really mess things up. So, anyways, so I'm just going to put in a cup, um, which some of the liquid's going in anyways, but it's fine. They kind of look a little gnarly when they've been soaked, but they're totally fine. Don't be scared by the, by the little brains. <laughs> You'll get some... I feel like whenever I have babysitters come over, I'll be like, you know, this is this is the time my daughter's bedtime is and blah, blah, blah. And then I have to open the fridge and I'm always like, help yourself to whatever. But um, <laughs> those are cashews and my dog's food looks like human food. So don't eat the dog food. So, and they're like, don't confuse the yeah. floating brain nuggets. For so this might be slightly more than a cup, but okay, that's good. Um, and then, do you ever use nutritional yeast? No. Nutritional yeast is basically the go-to for all vegan cheeses. It's yeast flakes, but it's also, I, I can't have gluten, so it's obviously gluten-free, but it's full of um, B vitamins. Mm -hmm. So it's, very, it's a very like fortifying food. Which what does it smell like? B, B vitamin. It kind of looks like um, fish food. <laughs> it looks like good. fish food, but... Yeah, this I like is, Bragg, this brand. Bragg's, yeah, and this is what gives it that kind of cheesy flavor. So, if you're making like a vegan mac and cheese, usually it'll add for add ask for um, nutritional yeast. So this is two tablespoons. Again, I do have <laughs> I have measuring spoons, but I'm just gonna use like a regular big spoon because that's generally what a okay. So some just already fell in. Again, I'm an eyeballer, so I would say that was half a tablespoon. So this is another tablespoon, so I'm just gonna add. And you know what? This is, you can't really mess up with this stuff. What does it taste like plain? Disgusting? I mean. I had my mouth my, in it. Come on, Jenna. Here's your fish food for the day. It's not bad, but it's, it's not bad. You, you wouldn't just like sit and, it's really salty, right? You wouldn't just sit and like eat it. You wouldn't. <laughs> Maybe you could. 
<laughs> yeah, it, it has a texture of like powdered broth, kind of. Yeah. Like a chicken broth, but not as salty. Yeah. It's a good like seasoner. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So the next thing would be, do you want to do this? No. No? Okay. Is um, lemon. So um, two tablespoons, which to me, if I cut a lemon in half, I feel like that's two tablespoons. <laughs> <laughs> By the time you squeeze it all out. Feel free to measure if you want. So I, I feel like this little tool, lemon squeezer, I use every day in my house. That's about one. And I you know what? Things. This recipe is one of those things that if you, um, if you try it and you're like, it just doesn't have um, like enough bitterness or you, you like it a little bit more lemony, um, I feel like maybe if you make it a couple times then you'll... Get the ratio between like the yeast to lemon ratio. <laughs> you'll get to know like what your palate likes. Um, I feel like lemon, you can't go wrong with lemon. I just have a natural, as a woman, aversion to the word yeast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Anything yeast, I'm like, oh, that's a pass. I'm okay. It doesn't sound friendly. I know. I know. It's like saying moist or something. Yeah. Wait till the, it gets moist and yeasty. <laughs> that's what she Sorry. said. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. What's that? So, um, garlic powder. Oh. Again, another staple. I feel like so many recipes ask for it. Um, it's a quarter teaspoon, which to me is like, da, 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 da. <laughs> I'll just put the quarter teaspoon back over here on the tray. It's so weird. It's like, it's almost like this game I play with myself. Like I'm like, if I can get through the whole recipe without dirtying the measuring uh -huh. spoons, I like win. I love that. <laughs> but also cleaning them is annoying. It is because you'll use like two out of the four and yeah. you don't want to take them off the ring. Yeah. I like the ones that individually stack together, but I take them off the ring. It's yes. Too annoying. Oh, yes. Okay. So after that, we use... For all my measuring I do in the kitchen, right? <laughs> because I'm in the kitchen so much measuring. <laughs> after that, we use salt. Um, where's my little salt thing? Oh, here it is. Okay. So basically just like a, I feel like a pinch. It asks for uh, half a teaspoon. So yeah. That's about, there it goes. Again, you can add more salt if you're like, uh, this isn't salty enough. Some people just like salt. My blood pressure tends to run on the low normal. Oh. Like 120 over 60. Uh-huh. Or one, yeah. Um, and my doctor is mm. like, have as much salt as you want. Oh, wow. That's yeah. great. And I love salt. I've always been like, you know, I feel like there's sweet people and they're savory. Yeah. I like savory things. Yeah. You know what? I never salt stuff. Um, like I obviously add salt to recipes, but I never salt stuff. And um, but I like salty things. It's weird. Like I never just think, oh, I sh I can add salt to it. But it just depends on people's health. Some people can't have any salt. My dad mm -hmm. had um, a kidney removed, and he couldn't have any. I mean, he had a very very restrictive diet because mm -hmm. of what his kidney could handle. You know, so yeah. don't. Don't pile salt on unless your doctor says it's okay, because I don't want to be responsible for anything happening to you. Well, it's probably like sugar with people with diabetes too, right? Yes. It's no good. Yeah. We're very fortunate if we don't have to think about those things, because, oh my gosh, salt and sugar are in everything. Yeah. Okay. So, um, the next thing would be pepper, which for measurement would be quarter teaspoon, I guess. Until your wrist gets tired? Yeah. So, quarter quarter's not much. I would say like... Five or six. That's probably good. I like pepper. Some people don't, so you don't need it if you don't like it. And then we just add a quarter cup. I did measure this, which I, if I didn't have to go over to the tap, I probably wouldn't have. Okay. We got our brains. We got our yeast. It's moist. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeasty check. and moist. It's it's all the things. All the things. <laughs> Jenna's like, yeah. you're going to make me eat this. Okay. That's it, basically. And then we're going to put on our fun music. Make sure it's on pulse again. And you just blend it to whatever consistency you want. And you can see exactly what it's doing. So I would say err on the side of 
um, making it um, not smooth because again, it's like with the Vitamix. Once you hit the point of like it being too liquefied, you can't go back. So kind of, I would say aim for like first, your first blend like a chop and then check it out and then go back. What's in. the ideal consistency that you're like, if you had to, if you had the ideal situation, what I are you would going say, for? I would say kind of like we did with the nut butter. Um, you don't want like a cream cheese, but you want it kind of um, like a, a little, like a choppy cream cheese maybe. Okay. Yeah. So that it's dippy, but it's got texture. Mm. So, so on that note, here we go. <laughs> so this looks liquidy, I think because I was adding um, liquid from the um, cashews, but it's not bad. But also when you store it in the fridge, it's gonna, the water, some of the water is gonna evaporate. So keep that in mind too. Depends on if you're planning to eat it right away or store it. Yeah. You could set it out too for a little bit. So I have a feeling I'm going to need my celery for this. <laughs> um, so like with anything like this, if you put it in the fridge, the flavors are going to like meld together better. All the flavors will infuse and have time to kind of like, you know, it's like if you're, you, if you let something simmer for a while. So right now it's going to, you know. You're not going to get the full, we'll put it in the fridge for a bit, but you can try it. Should I dip a carrot? Yeah, let me just check to see if it's, it's just slightly liquidy, but you know what? It will, um, it It'll will. It'll stay put. Yeah. It's not on bad. On the celery or carrot. I feel like once I put it in my mouth and start chewing, it's all the same. It's going to, everything's going to taste like it, you know, it's, it's. Kind of needs to oh, sit for a little I bit. I just made a mess. <laughs> That's awesome. Does it feel? You know like what it, I like? Does it need more of anything? Uh -uh. That lemon is awesome. Yeah. I'm always looking for a dip. That's not hummus and not my nut butter because I always do that, and I'm always crazy. Like sometimes like egg salad, mm. but I don't want to eat eggs that often. Mm. You know, I think eggs sometimes, but mm. not every day. Um, and I never know what else. I want something I can dip that's got a texture and a thing and that isn't something bad for me. And this is that. This is super fun. You like it? Oh my god, this Does is a great more, snack. Like pepper or anything? Um, I think one of the viewers sent us a like a chickpea tuna mm. recipe, which would be similar to this. It says really good flavor. Yeah. The lemon's really good. With the, you get a little hint of that nutritional yeast and you taste the garlic and it makes it feel, with the pepper, like all of those go really well together. Thank you for being open mm. to it. Because mm -hmm. some people would be like, this doesn't taste like cheese, but it's like. You can't think you're trying to eat cheese. Yeah. That's the problem. You just yeah. have to think, oh, here's a fun textured thing yeah. that's a snack. And it would be great as a spread on toast. Mm-hmm. Like I always do Ezekiel toast, but that's not gluten free. So Bodhi has a different bread he eats because mm -hmm. he's gluten free. Um, you're gluten free. Mm -hmm. I should be gluten free, but I'm not. Um, that would be great on toast if it was a little less wet. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I think it would make it's a little bit soggy. Like if it. I think if we said if it sits out for a bit. Yeah. Then. But yeah. And you know what? You could also, in the recipe, you could cut the water in half. Because, remember with the nut uh -oh. butter, how, it, I mean, it got to a butter texture mm -hmm. without, without any liquid. And you know what? We added lemon juice, too. So You know what I also feel like you could add this to? For those that, like, do make your own pizza, but you want, like, a vegan... I love, I love mm. cauliflower pizza crust just because I actually like it. It's thinner. It's mm -hmm. a little crunchy. Like, I love... I just like it. Mm -hmm. If you're going <clears throat> to make your own, to use this as a texture, if you didn't want to use like the cheese, totally. I can't do vegan cheese. I don't know what's in it, but every time I eat it, I get sick. Mm. I get like a weird, I, my body can't, I, multiple times I've tried. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's in it. Hmm. But this, you can have like, I can see it going with like the marinara, you know, the pizza sauce and then this and then like all your toppings that you like and it would just give it like that texture. Mm -hmm. It's really good. Another That's good really one, good. Um, a go-to vegan cheese is my 
which maybe we'll do it again, is we could, you know what, we could do another episode like this, but with tofu. Yes. Because I'm all about tofu. I love tofu. When I make lasagna, I make a tofu ricotta <laughs> cheese, and you would never, ever know that it's not real ricotta. It's so good. And Let's do that. So that's what you would use on a pizza. Mmm. And you can add like more salt. I feel like because cheese in general is really salty. Mm -hmm. So you just add more salt to it. Right. Um, but yeah. Mm. It's just that's so really versatile. Good. Moving on. Mm -hmm. Moving on. I would say that one's a winner. That's a winner. Ding, ding, ding. Next up would probably be my favorite cashew recipe. Mm. <laughs> this one is so easy and I probably make it like once a week, maybe once every two weeks. Only because I don't know whoever, if you have children or if you just love fruit. Um, this would be like if you're trying to find a healthy replacement for like whipped cream. Yes. Okay. It doesn't have the same um, consistency as whipped cream, but it's so good with fruit. Or and if I mean, mm. I feel like all kids love fruit, but if you want your kids to eat more fruit, um, sometimes my daughter will say, "These raspberries are too tart," and she'll want me to like sprinkle sugar on them or put some honey on them. And this is so healthy because you get the natural sweetness of the cashews, and it kind of like replaces having to use artificial sweeteners amazing so good i can't wait so, to continue eating your food <laughs> so this is called cashew cream there's a lot of variations of cashew cream um because you can make like a base of cashew cream and then again you can add like herbs and spices um you can use it with mashed potato with like a, with a baked potato if you do the savory version or does it have too much sweetness in it uh, no, not if you add like yeah, what we did. Yeah, no, you for could. That. Yeah, you totally could. So yeah, this is just naturally sweet on its own, but you can add. We might add like a dash of maple syrup, um, mm -hmm. which is again you don't you can add like, you know, agave or whatever yeah. variation on a thing. And you don't have to add much, and it'll just like elevate it that much more uh -huh. for sweetness. So I don't even mind like if I'm doing a normal whipped cream mm -hmm. if it's not sweet you know when you don't sweeten it and mm -hmm. you just have that fluffy texture with the fruit that is sweet mm -hmm. it's like I'm fine even if it's not very so sweet yeah. yeah yeah um okay so this is this is the blender now high-powered blender which makes um blending something like nuts very easy so you would just take like you can obviously double the recipe if you want more so we're gonna do a cup of cashews and I'm gonna add the water so the water for this is half a, half a cup of water so a cup of cashews half a cup of water I'm adding the cashew water because as Jenna experienced it's sweet it's sweet right it's not overly sweet but it's definitely sweet so I would say that's probably a cup and then half a cup of water. Okay, so that's good. The thing with blenders and Vitamixes is unlike a food processor, you always have to have a little bit of liquid mm -hmm. or you'll start to smell smoke. <laughs> so always make sure there's a little bit of um, liquid before you turn this bad boy on. Okay, so we've got basically just cashew water soaked cashews again better overnight but fine if it's like an hour before um and warm water if you want to speed up the process and then you honestly could just blend this and it would be enough do you want me to show you sure and then i can add this stuff and yeah. you can just see, see how, the difference yeah. like the options and the differences because it's just to me it's mind-blowing how good it is mm. just on its own okay this is gonna be loud again <laughs> sorry okay it already looks good can i give you this one again yeah but well my mouth oh yeah oh here let me just start fresh i don't want to yeah. contaminate the supply yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um the one ingredient I usually do always add, which 
isn't bad for you is vanilla. So mm. this is just on its own. Vanilla, vanilla adds a little kick. It's like a light cashew butter and creamier. And is plenty, frankly. So if you only did that and dipped some fruit in there, it'd be fantastic. Okay, but wait for but it. Wait. This is this is when we really escalate mm. it. So um, if you're doing a cup of cashews, you would add half. You know what? I am going to use a measuring spoon. Vanilla can get out of control if it's not measured. It can. <laughs> and you know what? I There's do no not. Going back. Yeah, I don't want to mess this up. A pour of vanilla. I'm a good helper. Yeah, this is good. <laughs> so vanilla, and I am gonna add, I would say, a tablespoon. I'm not gonna um, block your face. Let me use this there you go. measure. Let's do one. Is that a teaspoon? That's half a teaspoon. So it's generally. A teaspoon. It's oh, generally no, like three, I think. But again, you can't really go wrong. Oh, I'm holding this right in front of your face. No, I thought I was funny. unblocking your it's face. Funny. Okay. Now this is gonna take it to the next level. Hold, please. I turned it on high because as you can see, it just takes the texture, it really smooths it out. Mm -hmm. um, and it almost makes it a little bit more frothier. So I'm gonna use another clean spoon. So you... mm. Oh, yes. Right? Yes, it's delicious. Right? Mm. It's thick so and creamy. It's so good. Mmm. It has a lot of body to it. Is that the right word? So that is really good. I like that a because lot. Because it just came out of this. It's warm. It's but warm. It, but imagine it chilled and then you take, you take cold, cold cashew cream, sweetened slightly, um, and dip your fruit in it. And it's amazing. It's so good. So good. I love it. Mm. Like mm -hmm. I could eat it just with a spoon. Mm. Mm -hmm. Isn't that good? Mm -hmm. You know what? I'll that is really good. It makes me dance. I <laughs> that is really good. <laughs> that is really good, and I can't wait to eat all of this now. <laughs> oh my goodness! So good, right? Oh wow! That really made me happy. <laughs> so then, if I like a snack, but I want it on the and sweeter side. When it's chilled, it's even mm, better. I bet. What happens if you put this in the freezer? Can you eat it like an ice cream? I mean, why not? Totally. Does it harden a little bit, or does it get too hard? Um, it wouldn't get that hard because the oil's in it, right? Mm, it would. It would. But, I mean, just you could just pull it out for like right, let it sit for 10 or 15 minutes. That's so good, Heather. Yay. Winner, winner. Wow. Chicken dinner. Not the right saying with making all these vegan dishes, but. So here's why this is giving me a huge problem. Uh-oh. With knowledge comes responsibility. Uh-oh. And now I uh -oh. feel like I have to bring this into my kid's life but it means I have to now like do shit in the kitchen I'll make this for this is so easy this is because so at night they're like I'm craving something sweet and I'm like you're not gonna have to and I just turn I literally just turned into bitch mom instead of helpful mom mm -hmm. uh I'm like you can't and you're not no it's we only try to eat like sugar treats on Fridays sugar Friday we call it <laughs> I'm not always successful at keeping it just to Fridays but um this would, you know, that late night, I'm like, just take more vitamin C. It would cut your sugar <laughs> craving. And it's like, that's not what a teenage boy wants to hear when they want something sweet. This is great. Something like this. Yeah. You know what? I'll think of That would other... be great with an apple, too. That'd be amazing. Or, oh. or even a banana. I mean, everything. Everything. It's so good. Now, what if you wanted it, like, really thick? You just do a little less water to cashews, right? Yeah. The ratio. Yeah. So when I was in cooking school, we would like throw events mm. and stuff, kind of like a part of our curriculum, but also for fun. And we always had like a, hang on. Oh, oh no. This is how good it is. <laughs> I'm just Did saving. I fling it on you or I'm, did it land on you? I'm saving. I'm touching your boob I'm now. saving some now for, into for a later. Different kind of show. This All is right. for later. I that just was realized nice it was snack. slightly blobby there. Okay. Sorry. Um, 
we would always have like a, a fruit station with this and like it would just blow the socks off everybody. I mean, you could dollop this on pancakes, on French toast. Yes. Um, yes. It's this so is good. really... No, I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Mmm. Okay. What did, we, what did we start with? Butters to cheeses to cream. Yeah. And now we're going to do like a standard ranch dip. Yummy. Do you like ranch? I love ranch. Normal ranch? <clears throat> All about it. And can you use it as a salad dressing too? Or is it more like a... You can. Just like the other ones. Like you can dip your fries in it. You can. And you can add parsley, oregano, dill. The one we're doing today is dill. So... That's exciting. Whatever you fancy. And we have the... Mary's Gone Crackers. These are really good and they come in all different flavors and they're really crunchy and mm -hmm. dipped in um, that cashew cheese. Yes. It was, I couldn't stop making happy sounds. Yeah, they're super so, good. Yeah. They are hard though, so if you got They're hard. You're if you're getting eat. dental work, don't <laughs> use these. Don't, don't break a tooth. Yeah. Um, so we're gonna start out with our base, which again is um, soaked cashews. This is... We're gonna do a cup. This one doesn't ask for extra water, so I'm gonna measure because you want to avoid the I don't water situation. Add, yeah, well, these things are five minutes too. Yeah, and it's really hard to mess it up, which I love. Uh huh. That's probably why I don't bake as much as I do because it's just baking. Baking's finicky. Yeah, and because I'm gluten free, and my husband is mostly vegan. Um, vegan gluten-free baking can be so temperamental. I feel like that requires an extra chemistry degree <laughs> so that you can like know what, it's a you lot. know, what ingredients to use in what way. It's a lot. Because it's, uh, yeah. When you conquer a recipe, I feel like I constantly go back and use the same ones because mm -hmm. everything, it can be so finicky. Yeah. Um, but raw is probably raw baking. For vegan is probably the best way to go because if you're trying to like get something to like rise in the oven that's when you have issues and I feel like gluten-free sometimes and vegan too it can just get too like tough mm -hmm. and you don't get that like nice moist yeah <laughs> moist <laughs> moist <laughs> the word of the day is moist okay I think that's good that's a cup, right? Okay, so we're gonna yeah. throw that in. Do you want to do Sorry. <laughs> I, I haven't. I'll do the boring part of dumping the cashew in the blender. Good job. Thanks. What would we My do arm without works. you? Okay. Um, and then you could do like um, salt, a pinch of salt. Mm. It says three quarters of a teaspoon, which actually is kind of a lot, but like if you look, that's a that's, teaspoon. Oh. Wow. So, okay. So go nuts. The three quarters of that minus the pinch that I'd already done. Good. It's a teaspoon of apple cider vinegar. You want to do that? Uh, yep. I don't have my glasses I'm on. Sorry. I'm like this. Onion. Does this need to be shaken with the sediment Sorry. on the bottom? <laughs> um, like, do I need to blend that? You know what? That's you... what. That's what this is. It's called the mother. Oh, so you don't shake the mother. You don't want to rattle um, the mother, right? It, it It's basically like... Or is the mother supposed to be blended in with it's, her offspring? This is, what, <laughs> this is what you get when it's unpasteurized, but I don't shake it. You can shake okay. it. I don't. Well, then I'm not gonna. <laughs> I'm glad the mother... We don't need bits of the mother in their dip. <laughs> Mom's gonna stay home at the bottom of the jar where she's usually relegated. I feel like I dump out the mother. Okay. We've got the salt. We've got... Okay, so I'm going to do dill. I'm going to do half a teaspoon. This is a quarter. I'll do two. Okay. And then our garlic powder, which, again, is a pantry staple. How much? For... Let me open this up. Um, you can do half again. And with this stuff. No, this is... Much it's hard to see. Hard to mess it up. And then um, we'll do onion. Same it thing with so good. I onion, love garlic. Onion powder. 
Da, 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 da. And then you can just, um, if you want to put some pepper in it, burn some pepper up. That's probably good. That's basically it. Let's just put our. The thing is to just have those cashews um, floating in water on the reg. <laughs> That's the staple. It is. The floating cashew. It brains. is. It's it's kind of like the prep, and it's when it, when they're soaked, it's so easy. And to you just do. leave them soaking. I can't remember what you said. Just out or in the fridge. Um, like if you're going to do an overnight, do if you... it's overnight, I would just leave them out. But if it's longer, like if you want to store them for longer than a day, I would put them in the fridge. And then do you leave them covered or open? Um, I cover them, um, usually just because I don't want any gnarly things, but you, you don't have to, Okay. you could put like, some... I mean, there's not like a thing with the air or like no. having a netting over them. No. So it gets air, but no anything no. else. Or... Okay. You could put like just a piece of plastic wrap with elastic if, mm -hmm. if you don't have like proper lids but um so this is it the apple cider vinegar should be enough liquid but if it's not in your blender you can just add some water or I would even add a little bit of lemon juice I'm gonna go rogue <laughs> because um we have can... one over there yeah let's let's see what the consistency is with this I feel like it's gonna need a little bit more liquid but um we'll see here we go. Here we go. I'll get the lemon. Yeah. It's very um, herby, which is good. Herby. Here. My friend herb. Yeah, like, I don't know. When I think of ranch, I think it being like tart and sour a bit. And salty, garlicky. But you know what? Is that too much? It, no, 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 that's good. If you smell it, it smells like ranch. That's good. It does smell like ranch. It's the dill. Yeah. Yep. This is, that's better. This is another one that will taste exponentially better if it's been like sitting overnight for like, or even just in the fridge for 12 hours, I would say. Like if you just do it the day before. Mm -hmm. Um, but we're going to give her a try. I feel like you so could do this good. as a crudité too. It's just yeah. a different flavor than the other one, right? Totally. Again, sorry, it's not cold and the flavors will be better if it's been sitting for a while, but you'll get somewhat of an idea of what it is. Fantastic. Yeah. That I was, was so like, good. the pause was, and she The pause that. was, I would put the she... thing in my mouth with the cracker side down, and the dip was up, and so my tongue didn't mm. taste anything yet. That was really good, Heather. You like oh her? Oh my god. You like her? Uh, but it's, if it's cold and it's been sitting, it's going to be a hundred times better. It's awesome. It's good, right? I can eat this, like, whole thing. <laughs> We've got, like, our... Our, mm. what is it, game, mm. game night, <laughs> game night meal. We sh I should have brought this over for mm. Super Bowl. Yeah, this is really good. Holy would your on. boy? Would your boys eat this? Story would. It's got too much. Easton is like, he had a really complex palate when he was young. He'd eat everything. I'd just put any, all the healthy stuff on his high chair, and he would just eat it all. Where Story was like wouldn't eat anything complex when he was that age. And then they literally flipped. And Easton just wants bread and rice and like, it's impossible. You know what, that could change though. Yeah, I think it ebbs and flows totally. depending on what they're going through. Totally. And, and Story has the most amazing. Mm -hmm. I could take him to a fancy restaurant and he's like, mm. yeah. Mm. Would Bodhi like Story this would stuff? dig it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll send you home with some Mm. Samples today. This again would be good on toast. Just like a fun spread to put on toast or a bagel. You know what? I'm glad we added the mm. the lemon. I just... It makes all the flavors like mm -hmm. really come to life. Oh. Heather, this is so valuable. It's so easy and fast. 
And delish. Are we done all our cashew recipes? I feel like I feel like we only scratched the surface. A lot of you wanted us to do a cooking one, so I hope you enjoyed it. If you like cashews. If you like cashews or if you like you unsolicited friendship advice. <laughs> where are your girls? <laughs> There's other stuff we talk about too. Thank you for sending um, episode ideas to hello at jenandheather.com. Keep them coming. Um, make sure to subscribe so you guys can always be up to date whenever we post something new. You'll get a notification. Um, what else? And you can give it thumbs up if you like it. Yeah. And you Hopefully can share it with your friends. You can email the link to your friends and say, I really like, hey, you guys, you might like this. And just go ahead and share it, you know, if you think it's worth sharing. <laughs> That'd be cool. That was good. It was actually much easier than I thought it was going to be. I'm very impressed. You did good. This one was, I was like, let's start with something simple. But for those people who are like slowly dipping into the vegan world, are curious about plant-based foods these are this is a great starter pack <laughs> it is it's doable it's not like I think sometimes when you're trying to make the change or you're thinking about maybe just reducing some of you know the meat in your life even if you still eat meat but you want to like eat less but you're looking for some alternatives to mm -hmm. fill the day of snacks and whatnot mm -hmm. um, it can be overwhelming because you don't know where to start and the internet is just like flooded with like vegan and, and mm -hmm. you know, they come in at different extremes with mm -hmm. the commitment. And I just feel like, I think natural to us is presenting things in a way that can be easily spiritually and physically digested. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and this is, this is that, this is awesome. So thank you. You're welcome. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I did. And you get to take home some samples for your family. Yeah. To try. I'm excited. Thanks for tuning in everybody. I hope you enjoyed. See you next time. Bye. Bye.